my friends, welcome or welcome back. My name is Natalie. Today I have some finished objects, so three finished objects, uh, one whip and some general life or setup and other crafty goodness to share with you. So stay with me a while and let's hang out. Okay, so let's start out with what I'm wearing. Today I am wearing a finished object, which is my Sedotna by Caitlin Hunter. So spurred on by the um, my last episode and you know the colourful um, finished objects that I had at the end of December, I thought I would continue in this theme and I went into my stash and picked out some colours that I thought would go nicely together. So as you can see, I've got uh, this fuchsia pink going on and um, there's some red in there. Actually, I'll go one better and actually show you the yarns that I used. Okay, so let's go through this. Okay, so the main yarns that I used is this hank that I found at uh, a yarn store in Sweden and there was only this one hank and I thought oh this feels amazing it is the Gotland two ply and it's a high twist yarn it's quite rustic feeling but I just love it it has that stickiness it's light, it's airy, it has the stickiness from the lanolin. I absolutely fell in love with it the moment that I touched it, but unfortunately they only had one hank in the store in Sweden. Um, so I decided to use the one hank that I had when I was picking up my colours for the Sodotna, but um, I also then bought some more <laughs> because I thought, okay, started to knit with it and I thought, okay, this is, this is a bit of me. It actually feels a little bit like my hair. So it feels like home to me. Um, so that was the main color that I used. Uh, so that was my color one. Let's put that over there. Then <clears throat> this is also a Swedish yarn. Um, it's by a, a Swedish company called Jarbo. And it's a yak blend with a uh, baby alpaca and it's probably the softest uh, bearing um, not including uh, you know alpaca um, brushed alpaca silk and mohair but this is actually the softest um, the softest yarn that I've actually ever knit with it's very buttery so I thought that would be a nice contrast to the Gotland two ply and I don't know, I have always, always had a thing about the combination green, pink and green. I have put the two colours together when I've decorated uh, past homes. And I think, I, I think my original inspiration was uh, the Batman Joker from the 1960s, which is played by Cesar Romero that color that sort of uh, very lurid um lime green with the p uh, bright pink i just you know it just spoke to me so it i have always loved this color combination and then the third color that i used was this red which is a uh, garthanor priscelli and i'm not really a person who likes red but this colour, it's like an orangey red and um, I used it in my Malibu shawl and I had a little bit left so I thought I would use it for this part to contrast nicely with the dark grey. So I like the way it's come out. Now the green was meant to be my colour, my second colour. Um, which you're meant to continue down in the body. But as I started to knit with 
knit with it with the body especially as you have these little contrast um, pink and red in with the green it started to look a little bit pukey so I scrapped that and continued with the grey and I think it looks okay because you just get that pop of green um, without the pukey I mean chartreuse um, you know of the rest of the body so that's my sadotna it was a very quick knit um it's light it actually weighs exactly 230 grams so perfect it's warm so yeah so that's my first finished object okay i just realized that i didn't actually go through what the the uh, the specifications of this yarn was so this is um, a brand called Ul Centrum, so I guess it's like wool center. Um, two ply Swedish wool, and yeah, I think this is actually my favorite yarn. Um, so I actually have bought enough for another sweater, and I have some plans for this yarn, which I'll go through a bit later. It's undyed, um, which adds to. Uh, my love for it but yeah this is probably my favorite yarn of all time now <laughs> and so yeah so the second color was as I as I mentioned the Jarbo in the Yak Jarbo Yak and Yak Base um, so that was that another Swedish yarn this is uh, the Garthenor Organic Priscelli, um, very nice yarn. Um, I enjoy it in my Malibu shawl. Uh, so that e that base is seven, uh, 100 uh, wool, 75 percent Polworth, 15 percent Romney, and 10 percent Hebridean. So that's quite a nice yarn. Also, and then the pinks. So. This is the fuchsia. I don't know if you can see the cone there. It's a 100% um, British wool cone by Woolly Knit. And it's a staple of mine. I've used it many times before. I've also, um, I'm also wearing it as my headband. This is the Sophie, for Sophie Large Sophie Scarf by Petite Knit. Knit with, actually it's knit with both of these you can see the specs of the mohair and this is yarn that I've detailed many times before it is um, a mohair silk hand dyed by Elizabeth Paul so this is the last of this which I've used minimally just as the background for this part here so those two these it's those two together um, so I thought that would be a nice sort of add a little fluffiness to the sweater. So that's that's that. I I knitted pretty much to pattern apart from under the arm. So I omitted the last round of uh, increases because I didn't want that um, T Rex arms that you sometimes get with a a deep yoke and i it's meant to be a soldotna crop which i um i don't really do well with cropped sweaters so i just knit to where i was comfortable and i also faded out these little contrasts it's not quite blips because that's andrew maori but these little detail the color work details there uh just by decreasing the color work a little bit so yeah so that's <clears throat> my first finished object one other thing that I one last thing that I would say about the Sudotna is that it does not use hardly any yarn so I use just under two hanks of all centrum um, this is what I have left of the second hank um, yeah hardly any of the mohair and I think I used just under one skein of the yak but 
it's a really quick project that hardly uses anything so highly recommended okay so the second finished object i don't actually have with me here today because it was the socks commission socks for my neighbor which i finally managed to finish um just a quick note on commissions and how i feel about them obviously it's nice to be able to monetize something that you love doing and i love to knit but i just felt maybe it's just how i feel about socks in general but i wasn't feeling the calling to knit on it which is a shame because i would love to get paid to to knit things um but yeah <laughs> i don't think i'll be doing commissions anytime soon um but they were given to the recipient and I have been paid for those so that was really nice um, I'm just glad that they're finished really <laughs> um, the yarn that I used for the socks was uh, the woolly knit cone again in burgundy and I used some uh, Fikolana Arweta which is a Danish brand of yarns for the, for a little bit of durability on the heels and the toes because they have a little bit of nylon in them so so that's what I used for the sock okay so let's get on to finished object number three and this is my piano cushion so this is a pattern by Ladyship Designs on Ravelry and I have never knitted a cushion before um, but here we go uh, this had been a seriously languishing whip I started it in the summer and I recently picked it up again and I thought okay let's power through and get this finished and so yeah I have it it's actually quite refreshing picking up uh, five millimeter needles uh, that I knit that I used to knit the cushion because I don't think I've used anything under, a, sorry, over a four millimeter, maybe for about a year. So it was quite refreshing to knit something on bigger needles. Um, what else? So then the yarn that I used, so the back, let's go through the back, is um, some Malabrigo's Rios and I have, uh, I have two different types of uh, Malabrigos Rios. Actually, this yarn has a strange um, feeling for me because I bought it a couple of years ago um, to, I, I didn't have any intention with it, but I bought it just before I went, I had to go to hospital for an operation and it arrived while I was in hospital so when I returned the bright colours just cheered me up during my convalescence so it kind of has that bittersweet memory to it but it actually it feels really nice. Malabrigos Rios is quite an expensive yarn but it does knit up quite nicely and it feels very soft. I don't usually knit with merino wool but I enjoy the softness even though it is quite dry on the hands I don't have that sort of you know soft buttery um, feeling that I enjoy with uh, some some yarn some uh, more rustic yarns as they soften up um, the black for the keys um, was used use it was um, some we are knitters uh, wool that I received as a Christmas present one year and the white is some Swedish yarn that I picked up online uh, this is called Eureken uh, um, Ferret Svarta Ferret and um, yeah it's not much detailing on it but it's super wash wool, the white. Uh, yeah, so this is what I have left of the Malabrigos Rios and I added some simple wooden buttons for the closure. 
nothing more. Oh yeah, the keys were done using the keys were done using Intarsha. This is the first time that I've used Intarsha and I can understand why it would be quite a useful technique. Obviously I need a little bit more practice as it's not the neatest when I switched from black yarn to white but I like to try new techniques and yeah this was uh, so and this actually ties in nicely because I have only recently started to teach myself to play the piano here so I received a mini keyboard for Christmas and I have been tinkering away at it uh, the past few days which I have really enjoyed so that could be um, a nice hobby to complement knitting because it actually is quite nice on my fingers to just give my fingers um, some another range of movement so I would recommend to <laughs> uh, you know to pick up an instrument as a sort of a, a rinse a wash and rinse for the fingers just for some movement hygiene so those are all of my finished objects yeah, so start of the year, my needles are almost cleared, bar one. So let's go into that whip that I'm working on. So this is, I've showed it in the last few episodes. Um, this is the Anchors sweater by Petite Knit and it is for my husband so I've come some some way on the body but it's taken me a long time because I don't really enjoy the feel of this uh, merino cotton by drops it's a nice color and it's got that sort of gray mild color but as I was knitting with two different projects both grey, I definitely know which one that I prefer. But it's funny because in the last episode I did say that my husband prefers softer wool, he's not really a woolly wool kind of person but I knitted him a sweater which was a modified no thrills sweater by uh, Petite Knit for him made out of uh, actually here the woolly knit comb by uh, woolly sorry <laughs> the 100% British cone by uh, woolly knit and he wears it a lot and he is slowly starting to um, appreciate you know like on non superwash or merino wool sorry he's <laughs> He's starting to appreciate more rustic um, wools so that could be a good sign in the future that perhaps um, he wouldn't mind another sweater made from wool or more rustic rustic wools but alas I do intend to power on with this just to finish everything on my needles and so that I can start anew in 2024. Okay so let's go into some knitting plans. So I'm waiting for the anchor sweater to be done before I cast on anything. However I have got my uh, next uh, patterns lined up so let me detail those for you. So last episode I detailed uh, and swatched for my next project which was the which I thought was the As If Tea by Shay Johnson. Now I made a mistake and I bought the pattern and it wasn't until I opened the pattern and read through it that I realized that it is a bottom up sweater and I have a confession to make. I don't enjoy knitting bottom up. The reason being is that it sounds strange to say, but I 
hate casting on. I do not like the action of casting on. Maybe it's the method that I use, but it's a chore to me. Um, so if I had like a little, if I had a servant to do like all the jobs in life that I, I disliked, one of those jobs for that servant would be to cast on new projects. So they'll cast on the number of stitches required and I will take it from uh, row one, from row or round one. I just don't like it. And with bottom up, because you're casting on um, usually for the, for the waistband or whatever it is, and working your way up, you usually have to cast on the maximum number of stitches. And yeah, it's just not for me. So in this time, you know, I just shelved that project because I don't really want to knit a bottom up and I, I don't really want to re-engineer a, a paid for pattern and to, to, in order to knit it top down. So, it's still in my library. I may knit it in the future, but for the moment it's been shelved. So <clears throat> I do have an alternative, um, which I'll show you the swatch for right now. Right, so both of the patterns, so the As If T and the pattern that I'm about to show you would have been my participation for uh, the Black History Month Craftivism Make Along 2024 for the month of February hosted by Dr. Charlie Untangled, which you can find on YouTube, but it's essentially to support uh, a black designer um, through the month of February to, in celebration of Black History Month. And I think my next pattern fits the bill perfectly. So this is my swatch and the pattern is the modern mud cloth sweater by Chinua Matthews and the minute I saw this sweater I loved it it's a unisex pattern um, it's a top down and I'm sticking with the black and white theme as the uh, traditional Malian um, mud cloths were usually black contrasted with white and yeah I really love this all over colour work pattern so this is my swatch which I did in the round I didn't quite get gauge so I will go down a needle size so the recommended needle size is 3.75 didn't quite get gauge so I will go down to three and a half which I haven't swatched for this is my 3.75 but it's a little bit big so I will adjust that accordingly and I do not actually have to go out and buy yarn which I'm stoked about so for this swatch I used two stash faithfuls my woolly knit cone um, I wasn't sure about the nips in the white because I thought it would make the white accents a bit muddied because of the nip but I think it works out fine so it means that I don't actually have to buy new one new yarn and fits the bill perfectly although I'm not too sure whether because I will be holding I've held both of these yarns double to make a DK weight um, because these are actually single um, they are uh, they are uh, light fingering pretty much so together uh, a DK um, so yeah so I really love this pattern like it's and I think a, a whole sweater of this color work would just be divine so so I'm looking forward to casting this on and also as I've said before woolly knit cones are a staple of mine that I love they're affordable to me and you, for me I get a lot of mileage from one single cone so it's definitely a, a worthwhile investment for me okay next I would like to knit the heirloom jumper by fable knitwear 
Now I have had this sweater in my stash for years um, but I've always been put off by it because it has a very lovely panel down the centre of lace and as I've said in my last uh, episode I always fluff lace but now I have some tools and techniques to use for example um, using stitch markers after every repeat that I think might help me get my uh, fear of lace under control not fear but my uh, intimidation of lace under control so we'll try that and I plan to use the all centrum the Swedish yarn um, as the the yarn for the heirloom sweater it's such a nice pattern and I think a really nice nice um, light because it, it creates such a lovely almost um, not sheer but light fabric so with the puff sleeves and the lace panel I think it will make a really lovely statement sweater so but one thing I I'm, I have reservations about is that for my size she's she doesn't give the yardage of how much yarn is needed <clears throat> she just says uh, for this size you need X amount of you know the weight so she, so for my size it's uh, she says 200 grams of a lace weight held with a fingering weight now I plan to just hold this single um, obviously that won't change how much I need for this but it's it just sounds like two hanks because obviously one hank is a hundred grams it just seems like a, a very little amount although from experience I know that Fable Knitwear designs her sweaters quite cropped because she designs them with a vintage feel to be worn with you know high-waisted tailored trousers um, so I probably will need a little bit more I currently have 500 grams of this yarn a little bit more probably with the leftovers so I should be fine but the require I don't want to run out because you just don't do you really um, so I think I should be fine uh, if I if I have 500 grams and knit it a lot longer than the pattern says hopefully I won't run out of yarn and everything will be fine fingers crossed but it's a really nice pattern that I would that has been in my library for ages and so yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna go for it okay so the last pattern that I would like to knit is shawl slash cowl haven't decided yet so let me give me the grace while I talk through my plans with this um, so I have a couple of stash hanks and they are behind me okay so I have these two and I have seen the pressed flowers shawl well it's a range so she has a shawl pattern and a cowl pattern and a sweater pattern um, using the pressed flowers motif which I just find dreamy um, so this is some Swedish yarn that I bought when I was in Sweden um, and I have a couple of hanks of this and this is just some stash yarn um, this is uh, Merino Blooms by uh, it's just called Bloomsbury DK uh, the yarn by the yarn collective so I have these two and I think that they will be quite a nice combo for the pressed flowers this, this being the base colour and this being the flowers it's a mosaic pattern and so my thinking with that 
is I don't quite want to knit a shawl even though the shawl is a lot nicer if if I'm just talking about the patterns I find that the shawl is a lot nicer than the cowl so there is an infinity cowl which it reminds me of those infinity cowls that you used to get from American Apparel. Uh, American Apparel. Do you remember? I used to have one that I wore to death. That I used to wear sort of wrapped round. And I wore it all the time. And I don't really want to knit one of those. However, I have seen that Andrea Maori has this sort of bandana cowl shape so it's huge and you can wear it as a cowl but it also has that triangular so I didn't really want to buy a pattern by Angela, Angela Maori and not sort of use the stitch pattern that she's created so I found um, a free pattern by Pearl Soho which just has that um, cowl sort of sorry the bandana shape so you get that triangular point but it's a but it's a uh, a cowl so i would like one of those but with the motif the, the pressed flowers motif so i think i will purchase the cow sorry the shawl pattern by amy christopher's and and either just knit the shawl and then seam it together, seam the ends together, so I do get that pull-on cowl effect. I think that's what I'll do. I can always follow, um, if I get stuck, I can always follow the Pearl Soho design because I do want, I like that, I like the combination. Um, but the shawl is quite nice as well. I don't know why she made that variation the difference in the motif between the shawl and the cowl but if I had to choose to buy one of those I'll definitely go with the shawl because I'm more likely to to knit that and use that than I am the cowl so that's my next plan so those are my uh, three knitting plans okay so the next thing I would like to talk about is um, skills improvement so I have this I have this cashmere sweater vest that I that I thrifted from Poland uh, like a consignment store in Poland that was like just pennies and it had a hole in the chest um, I tried to create a little heart like an intentional mend however it slightly felted and the stitches the stitches it's not picking it up but the stitches on this garment are tiny absolutely tiny so it's quite hard to do du duplicate stitches on this so I tried my best um, but what I actually wanted was to create a nice embroidered heart on the sweater as a visible mend I didn't quite get there but it's okay it's still usable uh, it's a really nice feeling cashmere sweater I still have to sort of sew on the label properly but I've had this in my wardrobe since when did I go to Poland it must have been like 2008 no it was like 2005 or something like that so I have had this in my wardrobe since 2005 and I actually think I bought it with the holes in it um, so I would like to learn how to embroider and I've never really, apart from this, I've never really done any duplicate stitching on knitting so it probably would be nice to build up that skill because as I'm a knitter and I have lots of knitwear 
I can do a basic mend, but it would be nice to do like an intentional, you know, so sometimes you get a, a, a hole in somewhere, like in a, in a, a nice place to do a visible mend. Um, so I would like to improve that skill. I usually learn most things off of YouTube, so maybe that would be a, a nice place to start. So please let me know if you have any tips. Okay, I actually had to stop filming for a moment because I film on my phone and I was receiving a phone call and I actually ended up being on the phone for like an hour. So I'm back and it's actually quite cold today so I've pulled on um, a little cowl that I made from some of the uh, Malabrigo yarn actually, Malabrigo Rios. Um, and I get so much use out of this, just literally around tube, well, all tubes around, but <laughs> yeah, it's a, um, yeah, simple cowl, no pattern, uh, ribbed and yeah, I stick it on when I'm, when it's, uh, a bit nippy. So I'm wearing that. Okay. So miscellaneous updates. Uh, so as you can see, I, I'm in a slightly different setup. So the room I'm in is my office because I work from home, but I really wanted an area in my office separate to my workspace that I could craft and I can store all my craft bits and pieces. So. I created this little corner so that's my yarn cupboard and I have my crafting desk behind me which is connected to um, my storage my Kallax simple IKEA Kallax system and I will give you a closer look here and so I thought I would give you a close-up of my setup here. So I found this ornamental doorknob that I used for my uh, wool pantry. It's the closest thing that I could find to a sheep. And I've got my bits and pieces, my Marguerite picture. I love Marguerite. And lots of storage. And it's a cute little space that makes me happy. And I've got my yarn swift. And yeah, everything you need for a... Uh, happy hours of crafting and I've also got a little cubby for my cat okay so as well as this new little corner crafting corner that I have I also needed a way to store my circular needles so I actually use um, fixed circulars and before I just had them on a cork board up on the wall there and it just it worked I mean it's fine but it was kind of ugly I had a lot of like you know the long um, like 100 centimeter uh, uh, cords hanging down it just didn't look right so I needed a way to store my needles and this is what I've come up with so oh, <laughs> it's quite iridescent but yeah, this is just a simple binder um, from Amazon and it comes with like 10 uh, Ziploc folders. So what I did was I just labelled them and used it for my circular, 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 circular needles um and it's working really really well and it's just ke it keeps it organized they're really easy to access and i love it so i will insert the link um where you can find this it was inexpensive i think in the uk uh it was like 10 pounds for the folder and the and the um and the wallets so if you're in the, in the uh, market for 
storage for your circular needles i would highly recommend getting something like this to just keep it organized it's portable and yeah so that's that was my idea so it for 2024 we are looking to just you know scale up a little bit just keep things organized keep things neat um so for me i actually really love to have that, you know a place for everything and everything in its place so yeah I'm really happy with my craft room and it actually makes me it it's, has that uh, barrier between where I work and then I can come over here and craft and knit and I have everything uh, in their little bins and stuff so very happy with that um, so apart from getting more of this wool, don't actually have, well no, tell a lie, I do have one little mini acquisition. Um, so a couple of weeks ago, myself and a friend decided to take a uh, Friday afternoon off and visit a neighboring village um so we went to a garden center and we went to a craft store so it's like the perfect treat afternoon together and uh, she managed to get a little mini plant and i got some yarn darners because sometimes i find that i have lots of tapestry needles but sometimes i find that they're not as sharp so if you for example want to do some seaming um, or I don't know like helping to pick up a stitch or something like that the normal tapestry needles are quite blunt but these are nice and sharp so I thought I will pick up some sharp darning needles tapestry needles and so hopefully that will help when I come to do my visible mending um, things uh, having a sharp needle will help so literally that is my um, my acquisition for <laughs> January because I'm feeling everybody is feeling the January pinch so <laughs> so I, I'm happy with that <clears throat> oh with regards to putting up my storage in you know the corner I literally this was a, a birthday present from my husband and we actually didn't have the time to put it up or install until now so better than late late than never right so okay so i think that's everything for today i hope you've enjoyed your time with me and i hope you get some nice crafting crafting time to yourself and hopefully I will see you on the next one. Bye.